is what we're looking for in this lake here. This is a nice tampere walleye. Now because this is a fish we're looking for, we want to be real careful with it. When it swims into the gillnet, its body basically gets stuck. So because this is a fish we're looking for, I'm just going to cut the net away in order to reduce stress on the fish. I'd rather sacrifice a few holes in our gillnet than damage the fish. So once I make a couple cuts in the amount of filament, I can pull the net back and free the fish. Minimal stress, fish is still in good condition. Checking the sex, this is a male. Push on the stomach, you see some of the milk coming out here. So this is a male walleye that we can bring back to our shop and use to uh, fertilize eggs from some of the females we hopefully catch out of here. So we're gonna put her, put him here in this horse trough we have in the truck, in the boat. Bring her back, bring him back to our shop to use a little later today. All right, now that we have a horse trough full of usable fish, we're gonna bring them back to our field station, which is just about a mile away. From there, we can process the fish, which basically means strip the eggs from the females and strip the milk from the males to fertilize the eggs. Once we fertilize the eggs, we'll then add some fuller's earth, which keeps them from clumping. Then we'll let them water harden for about 24 hours and then put them in our incubation jars. We'll hang on to the fish for probably a couple days to let them recover from the uh, from stripping them of the eggs and the milk, at which point we'll get some weights, some measurements, we'll fin clip them so that we know which fish we caught, and then we'll re-release them back here into the lake. That way we're not affecting the uh, existing population of walleye. All right, we're back here at our field station, McGinnis Field Station, and uh, we're ready to process the fish that we brought back today. We have one female that is ripe and running, as we call it, meaning she's got eggs flowing out of her and we're ready to strip her of her eggs. So Chris here has that female, and what he's gonna do is basically gently push on the stomach to get the eggs to shoot out, as you can see here. Uh, this, each of these females can put anywhere from about 60,000 to about 500,000 eggs. These eggs look good, they're nice yellow in color. Basically by pushing on the, by, by massaging the stomach they do come shooting out of the vent. Once we uh, get all the eggs we want from this female, we're going to grab at least two to three males to fertilize the eggs. That helps increase the genetic diversity. So I'm going to go over and grab a male, one of the males that we caught earlier today. So once Chris is done getting all the eggs from this female, I can then extract some milk from the male in order to fertilize the eggs. This is one of the males we caught, and again, just by gently pushing on the stomach, you can see the milk coming out. This is a lot more sperm than we would ever need, but it's always good to use a little extra to help with, again, help with genetic diversity. We're just going to mix this up. This is just a standard mixing bowl we have here. Mix it up a little bit so that they can properly fertilize. Chris will grab another male and basically repeat the process. Once we strip the females of eggs and the males of milk, we like to hang on to them for a couple days and put them in a recovery tank. We actually have some stress coat in a separate tank. That'll help the fish to uh, basically recover from the stress of being caught in the nets all night and then also the stress of the extraction. So we try to give them the best chance we can. We got a good amount from him. But I need some uh, fuller's earth. All right, so right now I'm just going to mix the milk in with the eggs, make sure everything uh, happens. Then we're going to add some fuller's earth, which is a clay compound that's going to add to break down the adhesive membrane on the eggs. Naturally, out in the wild, the female is going to spray her eggs over a rocky substrate, and the eggs will stick. In this kind of situation, we don't want the eggs to stick together because we're uh, artificially doing it in a bowl. So we add this compound called Fuller's Earth that's going to act to break down the adhesive membrane of the eggs. Just two cups to a gallon of water. And then using a normal paintbrush or a turkey feather works surprisingly well as well. We're going to mix the Fuller's Earth in, which is going to act to break down this adhesive membrane. This is going to keep the eggs from sticking to not only the mixing bowl, but also sticking to each other. So I'm going to do this step for a couple minutes here to make sure we break down all that adhesive membrane. If the eggs stick together, they typically tend to die because they're not going to get oxygenated properly and they won't be able to develop. So this step takes a couple minutes actually. So I'll be mixing the fuller's earth in with these fertilized eggs now. Once I finish with the mixing, we'll just rinse off the fuller's earth. What I'll do is I'll take some water from any of these tanks we have set up here and just kind of strain it out from the bowl. Pour, pour the dirty fuller's earth water out of the bowl so that we get a nice mix of just 
just eggs in the water. Following that step, what we do is we put the eggs in a, in a basket of still water where the eggs can harden. Anywhere from about 2 to 24 hours, we'll let the eggs harden, at which point we'll then put them into one of our incubation jars we have set up in our hatchery there behind you in the garage, where they will take anywhere from 8 to 17 days to hatch. Right now, we currently have seven jars set up with eggs that we've collected, and this will be our eighth jar, so we're looking at a pretty good, pretty good yield this year. We're pretty happy with uh, what we've collected. All right, so we finished mixing the fuller's earth into our uh, fertilized eggs with that paintbrush, and what we're going to do now is basically rinse the fuller's earth off and rinse the eggs off of any, any blood clots or any non-fertilized eggs. So we're just grabbing some water here from one of our tanks, and we're just going to kind of real gently pour it out not hoping not to lose the eggs. So what we're going to get here after we rinse these off, as you can see the fertilized fertilized eggs here, but we're going to keep rinsing for a little while to get them as clean as possible. We want as little sediment, as little fuller's earth, as little blood clots, anything in, in this mix that's going to ultimately be our fertilized eggs. When they kind of settle out, I'll show you again next time, you can see some dark yellow eggs and some whiter eggs. What you're seeing there, the white eggs are eggs that were not fertilized or eggs that have died already, as opposed to the more goldish yellow eggs. Those are the fertilized eggs. Those are the ones that hopefully are going to grow up and be some nice fry for us that we can put back in the lakes. So here's a nice shot. I'll try to get out of sunlight there. You can see some, definitely some white, straight white eggs. Those are unfertilized as opposed to the rest of them, hopefully about 98% or so that are that are uh, fertilized eggs. So we're going to keep rinsing here, make sure we get these as clean as possible. And then when they're done rinsing, we're going to let them settle out in some water just so that the, the, the shells of the eggs can harden. Looks like we, Mr. Grant did a pretty good job. You can see some of that dark brown would be some of the fuller's earth that's left. It kind of looks like sand. That's what we want to get out of there. We, don't, we, do, we do not want that in with our fertilized eggs or in our hatch because it's just going like to be a little more, little more pollutant in the right. egg mixture that we don't, that we don't need. Ready? These eggs look like they're pretty, pretty clean, pretty good. So we're, the next step here is to put them in a, a, a nice basket where they can settle for about 24 hours in order to harden up. So I'm going to go bring these inside to put them in the basket. These eggs are going to go inside where they're going to sit for 24 hours and allow the shell to harden. So right now we have a bowl full, hopefully about half a quart of eggs that, uh, we, can, that we can hatch in. Each quart of eggs, each quart of eggs is about 125,000 eggs. So if we have half a quart, we're hoping for about, about uh, 60,000 eggs here. So let's go put these inside. Okay, so I just poured the eggs out of the mixing bowl, the nice clean and rinsed eggs, into our basket. This is just a real fine mesh basket that we have rigged here. And these eggs are going to sit in this basket in this trough. This is just regular clean water where they can harden. This process takes anywhere from about, you can do it for two to about 48 hours. So we like to let them sit at least overnight, give them about 24 hours before we ultimately bring them to the hatching jars, where in about eight to, eight to 17 days, the eggs should hatch out. So right now, these eggs are just going to sit here in this basket where they can harden for the next 24 hours. So as of this point, I guess we're done for the day.